Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. Oh, I'm so excited. I just, I cannot tell you how excited I am today to uh, bring you my guest and have this amazing conversation that we're going to have. And you know that I, I've said many times, uh, I created this show to bring you people that are authentic in living their truth and that are um, experiencing huge shifts and using the shifts that they've created in their life to inspire you that you can do the same. And my guest today um, contacted me via my newsletter. And if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, go to CorneliaStephanie.com and sign up. He contacted me to let him let me know what he was up to and the project that he was involved in and come to find out it's the same project I'm involved in. And so that's why I'm like so excited because we're, you know, when, 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 when you meet people in the soul family that share the same vision, that share the same common mission, common purpose, um, it unites us. And it just, it's, it's so inspiring to come together and actually live it out. And so, the truth is, is that you're part of that vision too. You're part of that mission too. And this is one of the things that I love about my next guest because he created, he wrote a book and he has three simple questions that we're going to introduce to you today on how to shift and change your reality now. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about him. Martin Rutt is the founder of Project Heaven on Earth. He's a dynamic speaker. He's a consultant and author of the New York Times bestseller, Chicken Soup for the Soul at Work. He's president of Livelihood, a management consulting firm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Martin has worked with such organizations as the World Bank, Sony Pictures Entertainment, Virgin Records, and Marion Merrill Dow Consumer Pharmaceuticals. He's also addressed the corporate leadership and ethics forum of the Harvard Business School and returned for four consecutive years. And the other thing that he, he's done, which is an amazing contribution, he's written this incredible, incredible book called Project Heaven on Earth. And I am speaking on behalf of the divine feminine in this world as a new earth ambassador. And I'm asking everybody in the world, everybody to get a copy of this book. And I want this book translated into all the different languages. I want it in every single school system. I want it in all the churches because it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for you to discover what heaven on earth means to you. Welcome to the show, show Martin Rutt. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Cornelia. What a just, you know, it's just our relationship. I, I, I should tell people, I found you on Google Alerts. And if you're not signed up to Google Alerts, it's free. Just go to Google Alerts, put in the phrase heaven on earth, and you'll get a report every day on how heaven on earth is showing up in English media all around the world. It's mind boggling. That's how I saw you. I met, oh, I didn't meet you. I saw that living heaven on earth. I mean, what more could, you know, my cohort. And I contacted you and we took off from there. Yeah. And can you believe, because um, we know some of the same people, you know, look going through the book and seeing that, you know, you interviewed Janet Atwood, which she's also, and, and Jack Canfield and yep. a lot of the same people are, are some of the same people that I got started with when I um, started my awakening journey back in 2007, uh, because that's when I discovered the passion test. And that's the first place that I began looking for my heaven on earth is uh, uh, passion. 
So, um, Martin, my goodness, I, I want to, I don't even know where to begin, but yesterday we had a conversation. Okay. Yeah. And yesterday, yesterday's conversation, I was so high after we got off the phone. I just, you know, had all these, I just wanted to go out and just, just share with everybody, everything that we were talking about. And one of the things that you were saying, and I just want to celebrate this right now. And that is, you were talking about how your book is getting global recognition, and I want to acknowledge that. And how tell tell us about the woman in um, was it it was it New Zealand or was it Austria or was it uh, <laughs> Australia? Who was the woman that gave the book to the president and said? The, the, her name is Elizabeth. She's in Austria. I did a webinar uh, actually for the Shift Network. And she was on it. And one of the purposes of the webinar and the purpose of the book is for you to discover what heaven on earth is for you to discover your own project. She came up with the idea, Austria is a heaven on earth country. And I, I went, whoa. Uh, and I said, Elizabeth, why? And she said, Martin, because it's simple, which was brilliant, Cornelia. You know, that she, for her, it was simple. And one of the things I found out in working with people about heaven on earth is, your project has to be simple for you. So she started a wiki in English and German. And most recently, she's taken a copy of my book to be presented to the president of Austria. She also gave it, to, she went to Bratislava, um, Slovakia, gave it to a friend there who also took it to the Slovak parliament. So this woman is, a, she's an amazing ambassador globally, uh, amongst others who are doing similar things all around the world. Yes, and I, I love that story. I, I'd like to find out find out who the person is here in the United States that can lovingly take this book to Donald Trump and give this book to him. Lovely um, question. Well, perhaps that, one of, perhaps one of your listeners. I would love that to happen. Right. Uh, let's just yeah. Let's just really you know call out what it is that we want, and that's part of uh, creating heaven on earth, co-creating heaven on earth together is speaking speaking our voice and speaking what's in our hearts and speaking what it is that we want to create living heaven on earth because part yeah. of as you're going to tell us as we go throughout um th this next hour is how this whole project and everything got started but for me when i started this show and even um the book that i wrote peace the flip side to anger really has to do with um not wanting to continuously keep creating the same environment that we've been living in for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years of war. And of, here we of are. Hells on, hells on earth. Hells on earth. Exactly. You know, and not keep creating that and really discover that we have the power within ourselves to shift our own reality but we have to be able to 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 really ask those those questions and so tell us how tell us a little bit about your background and and how how you got started so let's start there well it's a kind of an unusual way in um i'm a management consultant i've worked with such companies as you mentioned as mariel Mar mary and merrill dow virgin records uh, apple Computer, sony pictures uh, so major corporations helping them with their vision I've spoken four times at the Harvard Business School, so a pretty straight consulting uh, career. And um, it struck me years ago that I was not happy with the results that I was seeing in the world. And was there something I could do about it? And I said, well, what's my vision of the world? And, and, and this thought popped into my head, oh, you mean heaven on earth. And I can remember sitting there going, whoa, you can't say that. And then I thought, well, but wait a minute, you can talk about hell on earth, that's permissible conversation. Why can't you talk about heaven on earth? And so that began this inquiry in my mind and in, in, in relationships with thousands of people saying, what's heaven on earth? What's heaven on earth? What's heaven on earth? To, to really get a sense of what's, uh, what's present for people. And in essence, what I've discovered, Cornelia, is people know deep within their soul what heaven on earth is. And what this work, your work, my work, and others' work is, is designed to bring this conversation out, to make it normal yeah. to talk about heaven on earth, what I'm doing, what we're doing about heaven on earth, mm -hmm. and um, to, to, to evoke what heaven on earth is for people. One of the fears is that I'm going to impose my definition of heaven on earth, which would never work. 
Rather, the three questions in the book are designed to evoke what heaven on earth is for you and then have you begin to engage simply, I want to use that word again, simply in making that real. That's the essence. Of, well, that's how I got here. And that's the essence of the book and the work. Right. And so, yeah. And then, but you've been writing this book for quite a long time. Is that, many, that's the other thing. Many, many <laughs> years, right? You've been, you've been in this inner dialogue of writing this book for, oh, is it 25 years? Did you tell me? I did tell you 25 years. And, um, what happened was I, I had to keep, you know, I would come to somebody and say, ba 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 ba, and they would go, well, what? I don't understand what you're talking about. So I have to go obey, clarify what I was thinking about and how to say it, come back, try it again, try it again, try it again, until the way the content of what I was speaking landed with complete efficiency and effectiveness so that they got that what heaven on earth is for them and how they could explore and make that real in the world. And so, it was a lot of struggle about discovering what that is for people, uh, what the gateways are, because once you discover what heaven on earth is for people, which we'll talk about later, there are specific gateways of entry. So I had to discover what those are as well. And so that's what took so long. It, it really was a synthesis. As I said to some people this morning, it's the simplicity on the other side of complexity. That's what this book is about. Yeah. And, and you know what? That's what I love about this book. I love that you took your time because it's so practical. It's step by step. It's clearly got a lot of research, inspiration in there and practical tools and steps that people can use every single day. You can go to Amazon right now. Amazon has this this copy available to you. And where can people find you on your uh, website right now? Because you have an incredible video. I was on there playing around this morning. I went and I posted it on Facebook. You have an incredible video there that 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 engages people right away. Tell us and how we can we can I, learn more about it. Sure. Go to projectheavenonearth.com. Projectheavenonearth.com. There's all kinds of resources. You can sign up for my free course and you can order directly there as well. Whoops. You can order the Project Heaven and Earth. By the way, do you notice the title? I don't know yeah. if I did this with you. Yes. It's a double meaning in the title. It's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's it's project. I'm going to tell you. It's tell me. Project. I'm going to tell you. It's project. It's a project. Heaven on Earth is a project. But it's yeah. also project. Project Heaven on Earth. Because the projection comes from within to outside. Projecting it out. Is that it's right? Both your being project heaven on earth and you're doing project heaven on earth so that we can have the having of heaven on earth yeah that's it and with that we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back with martin rutt we'll be right back Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. And I'm with my very special soul brother, soul <laughs> mate, soul friend, in part of our soul group. And we're here to talk to you about how you can co-create heaven on earth for you, too. And so one of the things that um, kind of uh, makes people feel funny sometimes, I think, and I, I think I read this in your book, too, Martin, somewhere, is... Uh, that that when when people say the word heaven, so yeah. what is what is the definition of heaven? Do you do you find that a lot with people uh, that that they don't feel they feel uncomfortable about the word heaven? Yeah, uh, I've been asked several times. You know, can you not use another word? Um, and as I said in the previous section, my work as a management consultant has been mostly about vision. So people are saying, can't you use your vision for the world? No, because it's not as powerful as heaven on earth. The resistance to heaven is people think that I'm going to be imposing a particular hidden dogmatic religious point of view, which is not true, but doesn't matter. That's the listening. So um, I make it clear that that is not true. And the other thing that really, really uh, uh, I've discovered, Cornelia, is the notion of heaven it's really interesting for me. Heaven, uh, say in the, just before Galileo came with a telescope, so I, I write about this in my book, heaven was considered to be just above the Earth's surface and, and went way, 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 way up. 
Galileo comes along with a telescope, looks and, and doesn't see any, quote, heaven. So suddenly the notion of heaven was farther than we can see up there. It's the place you go, because I've asked people, what's heaven? It's the place you go after death. It's the place up there. It's the place of God and the angels. But what it is not is here on earth. So heaven can be everywhere but here. But think about the implications of that. That means that this can be hell. That's okay. Or we can have little bits of heaven. That's also okay. But we can't have, by that definition, heaven on earth. And there's a chapter in the book about, I think, 14 or 15 different religions. I hired this researcher, uh, getting his master's in religion, and I said, go and look at the faith traditions, the, the majors, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, come back with a report on what they say. He didn't listen to me. He came back with, I think, 10 or 12 different faith traditions and what they had to say about heaven and earth. I didn't know what to do with that. All of a sudden, I had this idea. Why don't we put all the faith traditions in alphabetical order so none is more important than the other? And you can see this entire landscape, Zoroastrianism, Christianity, Buddhism, Sikhism, uh, native spirituality, new age spirituality, all that's included. All of them speak about what heaven on earth is and and how to bring it about here, not later, but here. So the other thing that happens as well is once people get what heaven on earth is for them, the question of the the resistance to the word heaven, I mean completely dissolves. It's never brought up again. So what I'd like to do with you, with your permission, is let me ask you the three heaven on earth questions and your listeners as well. I'll just pause, if you would, as well, after I ask each question so people can can look for themselves, and you'll see what happens. And these questions came out of years and years and years of talking to people, what's heaven, what's heaven, what's heaven on earth, what's heaven on earth? All right, here are the three questions. Recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. Recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. What was going on? Do you want to answer that? I do. Go ahead. I'm talking to you. <laughs> so that's number one, because I'm here in the now. I'm right. here in the now. I'm here in the present moment. And in this present moment, there's nothing, nothing more surreal, more real to me than it's going to make me cry because it's that's how real it is. This is what it is. Exactly. I'm not looking at it in the future, and I'm not looking at it in the past. I'm seeing heaven on earth right here, right now. I'm living it, and I'm looking at you, and I see you as a reflection of how I feel about heaven inside of me. And so that's what heaven on earth is to me. Very clear. Second question. Imagine, I don't have one here. Imagine you had a magic wand. You can pick up a pen or a pencil. Imagine you had a magic wand, and with it, you can have heaven on earth. What's heaven on earth for you? Okay, because I'm already living heaven on earth. So it's not something that is in the future for me. It is something that's already happening in my reality now. So what is even going to expand my reality is for others, the others that are uh, playing with me in this human field of creation, of realizing and knowing that they too have the power to realize their own inner paradise, their own inner heaven on earth. And third question, what simple, easy, concrete steps, what simple, easy, concrete steps will you take in the next 24 hours to have more heaven on earth? Well, simple concrete steps is I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm living heaven on earth every single day. Every time that I bring my consciousness of love into the present moment and realize that I am creating uh, my own reality and that, that I have value and that I'm contributing So I'm going to continue on bringing that consciousness of unconditional love, of um, peace, and releasing everything that's no longer serving me whenever I come up against a block or a limitation 
or something that isn't heavenly to me that I release it and let that go. Very clear. So let's go through the three questions and the rationale for them. The first question, recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. Most people don't do what you do, Cornelia, which is um, they talk about some incident in the past. Uh, my baby was born walking in nature, having a wonderful meal. Um, so there is a past experience that people have had, which they say, yes, that this, it, this was heaven on earth. But what's interesting is no one says, no one asks me, what do you mean by heaven on earth? Mm -hmm. What people do is what you did. They just answer the question. But in order to answer the question, you must already have what I call an already knowing within you that knows what heaven on earth is. And you go back to, you scan your life and you go, oh, the time I was you know, with my wife, she smiled at me, we, walking in nature, whatever it was. So that's one. Second question, here's a magic wand. The reason for the magic wand is it removes the necessity of having to know how you're going to do it. And if you don't have to know how you're going to do it, then the what in its fullness can arise. And for you it was so that everyone else gets heaven on earth as well. And then the third question, what simple, easy, concrete steps will you take in the next 24 hours to have more of that? There's two kinds of answers. One is, in your answer, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing, but, but they'll add to it, and this is my contribution to heaven on earth. Or they'll come up with something brand new. You know, I'll, I'll have a conversation with my wife to clean up that in, issue between us, or um, I'll smile at 10 people, or I'll do something to help end hunger in the world, whatever it is. So those three questions get at, A, you have had an experience of heaven on earth, B, you do know what heaven on earth is, and C, you're going to take some action, some simple action. Simple is the key word here. And simple could be an example, we come back from the break, I'll tell you some, some simple examples of what people are doing by their definition of what simple is, to begin creating or to continue creating heaven on earth. This is such a brilliant way that you uh, summarized everything that you just took us through and how easy that is. And of course, now that I'm sitting here, I can think of all kinds of other things that I could have said. And all this other, it doesn't matter. Like even, you know, sitting down with a book, or it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is, but it just, it just matters of bringing your consciousness and your, and your awareness as to what heaven on earth means to you. And that's part of your whole project of heaven on earth. Let's tell the listeners again, Martin, where they can get a copy of your book, where they can, let's, let's tell them. All right. So the book is available on Amazon all around the world. Go to your local Amazon, which whether it's the US, Canada, wherever, and look for Project Heaven on Earth. Make sure it says Project at the beginning. Uh, and you can also go to my website, projectheavenonearth.com, and there's a, a link on the book page to Amazon in, I think, like 13 countries, including the US. And then um, you have a Facebook page. I have a Facebook page, uh, which is Project Heaven on Earth. And if you do the course that's on the on the website, you'll be invited into the Heaven on Earth community as well. Right. And so, how do they how do they do the course? The course is a simple sign up on the uh, on the landing page, front page of the of Project Heaven on Earth. You'll see a little box. Just put your name, your email, and your country because we want to know where people are from, and uh, you'll get the course. Okay. And at the end of the course, you'll be invited into the program, into the community, rather. Wonderful, wonderful. All free, all free. All free. It's a seven-day yep, yep. It's a seven day email course. In, course. Correct. Okay, wonderful. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Living Heaven on Earth. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess, and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. 
the process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her one-on-one uh, -on -one for many years now. And even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life, I still refer to Cornelia as my coach and I still work with her on an ongoing basis where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth. After working with her for many years, I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach, uh, coaching program, and it has absolutely been an amazing process. I now am a certified empowerment coach, and I got certified through her program, and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt and know the truth that I am the authority in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment. And now I have the ability to help other people do the same. So working with Cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. It has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy. So I cannot recommend working with her enough. I hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you won't regret it. I love Hi, that everybody. music. Isn't that great? It's, it's Carter. It's our Transformation Talk Radio producer that is picking out that music and Thank making you, everything fly for us so beautifully. Thanks, Carter. You're listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with my very special guest, Martin. In German, we would say your last name, Rute. Uh, and in American, we say rut? Root. Right? Root. Root. Like a tree root. Okay. Martin Root. That's, yeah. that's great. So, Martin, give us some examples of what people are doing to project, live heaven on earth, experience heaven on earth. Give us well, some examples. Yeah, I want to make this real. The book has a whole chapter called Heavening and Heaven Makers, in which I talk about all different kinds of projects that people have discovered on their own. So let's start with something very simple. A woman, Susan Alima Fryer in Hawaii, I did a workshop there. And she said, Martin, well, I can't do anything. Well, well what can I do? And I said, well, what do you do? And she said, well, I, I teach and I grow little microgreens. And I said, okay, so what's your definition of heaven on earth? And she told me. And she said, I know what I can do. She's embedded her definition of heaven on earth at the end of every email that she sends out. Wow. And then she's also taken the second heaven on earth question. Here's a magic wand and with it you can have heaven on earth. What's heaven on earth for you? And also put that in. That came from a woman in, in Chile who gave her that idea. So very simple, right? Then we move up to a woman in uh, Lunenburg County, Canada, uh, Nova Scotia, Canada. We were on the phone and doing this webinar and we're talking about the sufferings in the world and she said, I'll tell you a suffering, violence against women. I've been to the police. I've been to the government, nothing. What would you do? And she, I mean, she was mad. And I said, well, Susan, I don't know your financial situation. You could donate $5,000, you could donate a penny. What difference would a penny make? One of the other women on the call said, wait a minute. What if everybody in your county donated a penny a day to help end violence against women. She went, oh my God. Cornelia, they started a program called Making Change, in which they handed out little mason jars with a picture of a woman's face on it, half her face beaten up, bruised, half her face bright, alive, with the light coming out. And they asked people to donate a penny a day or more, but you couldn't put in $3.65 and say, that's my contribution for the year. A penny, a penny, a penny. They handed it out to people in their county and the county next door. They raised very quickly $2,500. That They then took that result to the government of Canada, which has a group called Status of Women, who gave them 
$100,000 for each of the subsequent three years, $300,000. And she now reports that anywhere she goes in the county, people's first question is, what can I do to help? So a penny a day, so simple. What difference can that make? Huge. We go to a real estate agency. This is a group of people. I was talking to this woman, Domus Realty, and she says, uh, I said, is there a suffering in the world that bothers you? Yes, homelessness. What can I do? I'm a real estate agent. I work 87 hours a day. I'm in a relationship you don't understand, blah, 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 blah. I said, Brenda, great. What are you going to do? And she went, oh. She goes back to her agency, sits everybody down and says, here's what I'm going to ask of you. I want to end homelessness by creating a home for everyone. How simple. I'm asking you to give your word that from for every home or business that you sell, you'll take $100 off the commission. We'll do it for you automatically. All you have to do is say yes. Everybody said yes. The last time I spoke to her, they raised over $140,000. They have a committee of agents, and each agent gets to pick one of their clients, so 20 people in total, judge the projects that come in every year to be funded. Simple, simple. And we take it all the way up to the woman we talked about previously, Elizabeth, who's taken on Austria. She has a wiki. She's taken my book to the president. She's doing talks all over the country. I mean, the woman is on fire. So you see all the way from an email all the way up to a country. Each person said, well, that's simple. That's simple. So here's my question to you. What's your simple? What's your simple? Discover that. There's your Heaven on Earth project. It's so great. What's your simple? You know, because a lot of times people feel overwhelmed by Correct. Yes. Yeah, they feel it's overwhelmed. Too big. I can't do anything. You don't understand. I'm a Canadian. I'm an American. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I'm black. I'm white. It's Tuesday. It's Wednesday. Pick a reason. Every yeah. reason is true. None of them matter. It's true. I mean, you're you're just like really like cutting up cutting away all the the excuses it's like really you're calling us to action in a major yeah. way it's like you're calling us to action and 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 really i support that i absolutely support that and i call for all the people to get a copy of your book called get three let me get three <laughs> copies a friend of mine said something recently which i thought was brilliant he said have people buy three copies one for themselves one for somebody you know would really love this or could use it and one for somebody who is going to come into your life that you have no idea of right now that will need or want this. So oh, yeah. buy three copies. Absolutely buy three copies because, you know, this is the kind of book that when we were talking yesterday, you know, somebody had said to you that this is the new Bible. And again, when we hear the word, <laughs> when we hear word. the word, right, when we hear the word Bible, it's like, uh, it's like a know, little, no, that's a little, yeah, yeah, too much. Yeah. But well, it's mainly because metaphorically. I know, but it's okay. mainly because people don't don't even like to hear the word. There's a lot of people that don't even want to even come close to the Bible. So we don't want to turn those people off. Um, you know, it's it's. I, I want to say that this is actually the template. It's an instruction manual. It's a it's a tool for the new earth. It's it's going to invite you into each person that's reading this book. It's going to invite each person into their own inner authority. And that's what I love about this book so much is because you put it right back to the person, not by telling them how something is, but by asking them to look for themselves and how they feel about it themselves, how they feel about heaven. You know, exactly. is that right? That, that is right. I want to not impose it on you. I want to evoke it from you. And the premise there is, I know that you know what heaven on earth is. I want to make that conversation normal so that, let me just jump up to another level, so that the new story of what it means to be a human and what it means to be humanity is we're experiencing and co-creating heaven on earth. It's time. It's it simply is. time. It is, and it's part of our evolution right now. And, you know... Um, I've been, I've, I also have an online membership where I write about heaven on earth every day. And um, in my experience, um, the hell that 
that exists is the hell that we're transcending out of our physical bodies and releasing and letting go of all of the ways that we experience and perceive hell in our own inner bodies. We're releasing that energy so that we can embody more of our divinity, more of our light, more of our truth, more of our harmony. And that is part of heaven. And so why not heaven? Why not why not live in paradise here on earth now? Because, you know, when we look at for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, we've had war on this planet, war. And it's just not acceptable anymore to, ha to continuously keep producing war, having war. And it begins with each and every person making a contribution and making a difference to bring their own inner peace, their own vision to the earth. And that's part of heaven on earth creation. Do you know, Cornelia, that this is the first time in history that an entire continent has no war? The continent of South America right now, there is no war. That's a first. That so let's take first. let's take it to other continents as well now. Yeah. Yeah. So what continent is that? South America. South America has no war. None. And and how long has that been going on? I can't tell you that. Uh, I don't want to say, I don't know. Sorry, uh -huh. no, I can't tell you. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so but it's, it's fairly quiet. recent. It's fairly oh, it's recent. Fairly, okay, yeah. okay. No, this is really exciting because, you know, um, we are too conscious. We're too awake and we have way too many tools as empowered creators to continuously keep creating war. And, and you know, the earth is calling for our consciousness, for our hearts to be open for us to contribute and be the new earth stewards, the ambassadors that we are and making the change. And so whatever, whatever people are passionate about, like you're saying, um, uh, whatever people are passionate about, whether it's homelessness, whether it's ending hunger, whether it is violence in the homes for them to find whatever it is they're passionate about and then um, make that, make that their cause. Right. When we come back from the break, what, one of the things I want to look at is what I call the gateways of heaven on earth, because having asked thousands of people, what's heaven on earth for you, what's heaven on earth for you, patterns emerge, and the patterns become very clear. So I don't know what gateway is going to be yours, but I generally pretty well know most, if not all, of the gateways that exist. And uh, that's fascinating to me. So the, the, the beginning of the book talks about the three questions and, and some other ways in helping you discover what heaven on earth is for you. Then we go into all the gateways so that you can refine or uh, discover at a deeper level which gateway, which pathway is yours. And then the book closes with, uh, in, essence, in essence, an action commitment from you to begin to, again, simply begin creating this today. Not, right. Not next not, week. Not now, next week. No, in next, today. In the next 24 hours. In the next 24 hours. And we're challenging the listeners. We're challenging the audience. We're putting it out. We're calling you to action. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Go to projectheavenonearth.com. Sign up for Martin's course. And go to Amazon and get the book. And so we'll be right back. Living Thanks. Heaven. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, and I am ooh, 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 so excited talking to Martin Root, and we're talking about Project Heaven on Earth and the three simple questions uh, that you can ask yourself about what it is that you can do to create your heaven on earth and what heaven on earth means to you. But right now, Martin's going to take us into what he calls gateways. So take us to it, Martin. Thank you, Cornelia. So asking people the second heaven on earth question Here's a magic wand and with you, you can have heaven on earth. I begin to hear people's answers. And if you ask that question over and over and over and over and over again, patterns of answers show up. I mean, very clearly. So I don't know specifically what you're going to say, but I pretty well know that it's going to be in one of what I call the gateways into heaven on earth. So in the book, there are gateways that I want to talk about now. Uh, with the heaven under the gateway. So one gateway, and it by no means the most important, but 
a gateway is <clears throat> your inner world. There are people who say the way you create heaven on earth is by creating it in here. The more in here it is, the more it will show up out there. So what, what does that involve? Working on yourself, living your personal values, uh, discovering and living your, your life's purpose and vision, expressing your artistry, uh, discovering and giving your gift and experiencing the divine. All of those in that chapter, we go into depth about how you can discover that. In essence, what it's saying is, I wanna have more heaven on earth within me and the parts of me that are not heaven on earth, I wanna you know, dissolve, therapy, however you do that. That's a gateway. Another gateway is relationships. So you and I, uh, Cornelia, well, I can be in a bad relationship with myself. I have an, a hell on earth relationship. So I talk about ways to clean up that relationship with yourself. Whoops. One of the ways is make sure you have both earphones in. Another relationship is relationship with others. So my relationship with Cornelia is bad because of ABC. How do I go and clean that up? How do I turn a hell on earth relationship into a heaven on earth relationship? Oh, that's brilliant. That skill is very, very important. And then finally, your relationship with God, with the divine. So that's relationship gateway. Next, living your global values. For many people, there's a value. So your value that I, I hear very clearly in you, because I share the same one, Cornelia, is harmony. When I hear that word, I, I, my head swoons. It's that powerful for me. So it could be love. It could be harmony. It could be peace. In essence, that there's a, a global value within you that you would like to see present strongly in the world. So that chapter talks about how to discover what that is and make it real for you. Then there's another gateway called the outer gateways. The primary one in there is ending a suffering. Hunger, war, poverty, illness, illiteracy, dirty water. There is, for those people, what I call a keystone suffering. That is a suffering that deeply, deeply bothers you more than any other one. And the premise is when this suffering is gone, not better, but gone, the other ones will just collapse. It's the keystone suffering, everything else collapses. And I talk about how there are people now in the world who have written books about ending poverty, ending nuclear war, ending illness, specifically saying that, not getting better, which is fine, ending it, uh, ending the major sufferings. Then, uh, also in the outer world is the gateway of institutions. What if healthcare, law, government, religion, what if its purpose was to help co-create heaven on earth? There's a chapter on that. Co-creating heaven on earth for your nation. There's a chapter on that. For your nation, for nations in your area, for the, the global family of nations. And finally, the gateway of heaven on earth as this here now. Those are the gateways. Generally, people will pick one, sometimes two or more. I'm not saying which one, but I want to present all of those to you in the book so you can go, oh, well, no, that's not my, ah, that's my gateway. That'll empower you to go, that's where I want to make my contribution, my simple contribution. So there's how many chapters? Nine, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chapters, eight chapters that talk about specific gateways. I love the idea of the gateway. The gateway, it's, it's an opening, it's a pathway, it's a, it's a portal, it's an opportunity, it's expansion, it's empowering. It's the same way that this book is talk, has, it has 15 different faiths that are listed and that are showing you uh, this faith, this faith. And I could, I was, as I was reading through it, first of all, I didn't know that this many existed. And then <laughs> I'm like, wow, I didn't know that, you know, so that was cool. And then seeing, oh, I, this is where I fit, but, and I also fit here and I also fit here and I also fit here. So it's so interesting. Um, all of the different ways and in, in, in how we can perceive heaven on earth, our faith, how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about the divine. I mean, this is what, what all of this is. And, you know, when you're just talking about the gateways and finding new ways to get in and where you can begin, where you can have a place to begin. 
Barry, let me underline what you just said, because what I want you to do, Cornelia, is begin. That's why the book is designed the way it is. I was going to write originally a book, you know, a, a theoretical book with, you know, heaven on earth, this is heaven on earth. But as I read, no, I can't do that. It's got to be practical. It's got to give you exercises and quotes and examples to inspire you so that you begin simply to take action. That's how we're going to change the the story. That's how we're going to co-create the new story. Can I tell you a funny story? When my partner, he's a pilot, when he, um, when he was home, I showed him the book and I said, oh, look, I'm going to have Martin on and we're soulmates and he, we're talking the same language and we're speaking the same language and all this, right? And so he's sitting down, he's, he's scanning through the book, he's looking through the book and he found something where it said, um, go and listen to this song. Go and listen to this song. Somebody had put, you know, this is what their version of heaven on earth is. So he pulls up the song on iTunes, you know, and then now we're listening to the song. We're totally in um, harmony with what what somebody's version of living heaven on earth is. Right? I know this. The song is the Pearl Fishers duet, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and it was it was absolutely incredible. So that was that was our weekend. So Martin, we have three minutes left. And um, it's been, it goes by so fast. It does. And, um, you know, of course, you and I are going to talk about you coming back and, and uh, us, us continuing this inspiration with um, getting this message out to the people and giving them um, practical tools and steps on what they can do to create their heaven on earth, their paradise on earth. Because, again, it's whatever it means to them. That's, that's the whole point. Um, so what is it that you want to leave our listeners with today? We need you. Only you can make the unique contribution that you can make. Think of this metaphor. You go to a store and you buy a piece of uh, software, a new piece of software. You download a new piece of software. The software opens and in essence it says, here are new opportunities, here are new possibilities that you've never thought of before. But then it stops because it can't continue without the content that's unique to you. What Project Heaven on Earth is doing is metaphorically a piece of software that says, okay, we can have heaven on earth, but we need your specific content. Only you can make the contribution that you can make. Truly, this is about we creating heaven on earth. And so we need you. I invite you in. Buy three copies of the book. Buy a case of the book. Uh, Join the the course, projectheavenonearth.com, and let's get started. Let's get started. We need you. We want you. Right. And let's let's bring out the three questions again. Three questions. Number one, recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth, what was happening. Question two, here's a magic wand. With it, you can have heaven on earth. What's heaven on earth for you? Final question, what simple, easy, concrete steps will you take in the next 24 hours to move that forward? Those questions are on the book. Those questions are also in the course the free course on projectheavenonearth.com. Thank you so much, Martin Root, for joining us today. And thank you to the listeners for being here. And uh, we will see you all again next week. Enjoy discovering what heaven on earth means to you. Namaste. Namaste. Thanks, Cornelia.